live. So, hello. Hi. Um, I'm very glad to welcome you here on my YouTube channel from Climb Marketing Consulting. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, yeah, in this video, we're going to talk a bit, little bit about you and your company, where you're coming from, where you are at the moment, uh, what your plans are for the future, and uh, yeah, what, 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 is your, what your offering is finally in the end. Uh, so please um, just introduce yourself a little bit. Yeah, okay, so my name is Kashyap Chinani. Ah, sorry, you heard the microphone. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that you can hear me now. <laughs> So my name is Kashyap Jilani and uh, I work for a small company, it's, uh, it's called Softmedics and mostly what we do is uh, enterprise application and um, doing projects, uh, many projects in Germany. Um, so currently working with Siemens and before that we worked for uh, Daimler. Uh, so the Siemens and the Daimler Benz? The to, Siemens and the Daimler, sure. yeah, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. So two big names in, in, uh, in Germany, yeah. yeah. So, so uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, and uh, looking forward to uh, next big name in Germany, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, what do you think uh, your, your special tools is? Because every, every software developer, every techie has sort of, you know, the good ones, they know, they can basically, in theory, they can do anything. No, I never but claim that I can do everything, and I think it's unfair for any developer to say that they can work in anything. Um, my specialty is Java. I've been working in mm -hmm. Java for over two decades, so okay. yeah, I have deep knowledge in that. And plus, open source uh, platform, mostly Linux and everything around it. So yeah, and I, I particularly focus on um, on enterprise uh, solutions. Uh, it's something which is like that gives me a lot of you know joy when I work on an enterprise solution. Like there are like you know there are big areas like games and network applications, engineering applications. Software is a big field. Um, sometimes people make good money by going into very niche market. Um, so I, I myself you know enjoy working in this enterprise enterprise domain like custom application which are targeted for the enterprise customers. Okay. What would you what would you say how how um, quick can you reply to, let's say, um, demand? Uh, because this is sometimes, um, very often, this is with good sort of software developer houses or software developers. They're usually overbooked. Um, when you need them, they're not uh, free, or you need to wait for half a year or something. How, how do you cope with this kind of? Um, well, it's. Um with us, it's not like half year or a year. Uh, mm -hmm. We are not that booked. Uh, but uh, again, it's we are also not something so, uh, which can like you know reply instantly. Like we are not okay. like as free. Like yeah. we are sitting on the bench waiting for like yeah, next customer to come in. So yeah. So maybe it, it takes like a um, couple of weeks, like four to eight weeks, to you know get started on a serious project. Mm -hmm. And uh, and again, it depends that what are the number of resources required. What are uh, what are the domains? How complex is the project? Yeah. What are the timelines? So it's not just, you know, um, something where you say that okay, uh, I want to build a house. Uh, how early can you make it? It depends that how big house you want to get constructed, or like how quickly you want to, uh, how much money you want to put in. Yeah. So there are so many different factors. Same goes with the software. That okay. if you want to have a solution developed, then there are like so many questions around it, like how well it has been analyzed, how well the problem has been uh, described, and how well the customer is geared up to have uh, a team external team work for them so there are like so many factors okay yeah and so you would like to do more business with german companies yeah that's what the plan is okay. where do you see like the, the biggest challenges lie in there for you in general and for you personally as a company and as, as a person yeah so far i've been i've been very excited i, I started working in german market about like um, Two years now. Mm -hmm. uh, before that, I was working in mostly Norwegian market. So, but German is German market is like very. Um, uh, I should say that it's very rich in terms of um, like uh, the projects. Uh, like there are so many projects uh, which are available to you as a you know, as a service provider, um, small, medium, large. Uh, and it, it, it's purely like it's something that you can decide that I want to work as. Um, 
as a developer or as an architect or like whatever role that fits you and sometimes you go for smaller projects which are like which you can deliver in like few weeks or few months and then there are projects which can go on for years and years mm -hmm. so uh, i think uh, the market is good and hot yeah okay do you see any particular challenges um, to access uh, the right customer not just any customer or not just any project for you personally now so far i have never come across any like roadblock in in, uh, in 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 any project in Germany. Like uh, the customers, uh, everybody that I worked with uh, have been very very receptive, very like, mm -hmm. very you know uh, open to uh, hear the new ideas and you know always giving you a freedom to test out new grounds. And then uh, you know this is something which uh, I have seen in some, some like my past projects where like customers were not very open to listen to the new ideas are not very adaptive to new technology so luckily that's not, not the case in Germany like the customers are open especially the big ones uh, the big enterprise um, they understand how fast the technology is moving and then how quickly they have to you know uh, modify themselves so that, that's a very good part and then um, um, like for a person like me who has like like oh, close to like 27 28 years of experience like so i have seen many technology phases and then um, i have seen uh, the customers and companies and like organizations who were reluctant to you know switch to to new tools in time and then uh, i also witnessed that how flatly they failed on uh, their products or their projects and just because of being they being adamant of you know being stick to something which was old or being you know phased out um, luckily that's not the case in Germany at least I have not witnessed anything like that so that's a positive thing okay yeah and for the future uh, let's talk a little bit about the future um, some you know for example there's always the any in any country the same thing that you always get by recommendation new projects further clients within uh, projects within the client uh, universe, or maybe even different companies, but apart from just being recommended, because uh, that's always not going to happen, uh, sort of like a more scalable uh, approach to find more clients, uh, different clients, good clients, and so on in Germany. Would you say there's a particular uh, challenge different to other countries? Because you've been also, uh, you also have a company in Dubai. Uh, yeah. In other countries, uh, you like the Scandinavian company and so on. Is it a difference or is it the same? Or, or which, which ones are sort of the most? Uh, yeah, so every country or every market have their own dynamics and then their own set of preferences for example i've i've, I've worked in um, in scandinavian countries uh, a lot and then i can tell you that um they are like um very much inclined to to the service providers who are based there or next door mm -hmm. um so so that's just you know a preference and in germany it's not um that uh, har hardly required like like okay you can work from a different city, so you're not, you know, uh, really looking for somebody who is located just in the next street so that you can always approach them and they can always come back, come to your office or you can go to their office and, you know, work. So it's a, it's a different, uh, you know, uh, set of, you know, frame of mind. And uh, and then again, then there is some culture, like I, as I told you that I've been in, in, in Dubai also, and there's a totally different culture. Uh, you have to do a lot of lot of hand holding to the customers in Dubai mm -hmm. or in the Middle East. Uh, not just say, let's not say Dubai, but just let's not single out one country, city. It's, it's across the board, yeah. and that requires a lot of effort and like additional cost to you as a service service provider. Mm -hmm. Whereas uh, the customers in Europe, they are much more uh, open and they have already received some uh, platform or they, they already have something in their company so that it's easier for them to you know absorb new things or experiment with new new concepts um, so like it's it's different uh, so everywhere the, the access to the market in Dubai would be to get clients would be a lot more difficult than in Europe that's, that's right okay yeah i didn't know that okay yeah, and, and let's not single out Dubai. It's like it's almost the same. In fact, I could, I should say that Dubai is probably the best place to go for business in the entire Middle East. Yeah. They are like far more open, far more uh, 
um, transparent and very, uh, very very dynamic as compared to rest of the Middle East. Of like course, there are there are places that you don't want to go as a service yeah, provider. I'm talking about in the Middle East. You don't want to go for as a technology provider. Yeah. yeah. That basically lived 100 years ago or something like this. Maybe something like that, yeah. Mindset. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's like the tip of the iceberg of, this is like uh, Dubai. Well, I, th I think uh, Dubai is in fact, uh, is a cool breeze in the whole, you know, whole sna like scenario in the Middle East. Like, um, um, and I, be I understand that everybody in the Middle East, they follow Dubai. Like mm -hmm. if something is implemented in Dubai, um, then everybody look to that example and then they say, okay, now Dubai has done it, so let's also do, yeah, do yeah, that. Yeah. So even the big countries like Saudis role and, uh, yeah, so Dubai is kind of a role model. It's, uh, you know, and very, very, like, uh, different from the rest of the Middle East. Okay, okay. Yeah. And I guess Asia, where are you from, like Pakistan? So yeah. It, it yeah, Pakistan is like, a, is, that's a totally different uh, place. Yeah. Uh, they have their own set of problems, their own set of opportunities, and same goes with India. Uh, same set, a different set of problems than any other country. So it's, you know, different everywhere. So um, you have to see that where do you want to place yourself, what is your best fit in the whole market, and where you can, you know, uh, make the most out of your, like, given resources. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, they, you know, in Germany, they, they discuss a lot of things uh, in media, a lot of things that I don't like, you know, always like very negative. So, they say basically India is going to be the next superpower, maybe even more, more uh, bigger or more better or powerful or whatever than China or something, or just next. Uh, like, um, well, what is, how do you see the, the development? Because you're so much closer to India. Or, or, yeah. Well, that's, you know, that's kind of a, um, uh, that's a question that, that falls into uh, the international politics domain. Uh, I, I think it has nothing to do with like technology or the technology which I am from, uh, which I work in. So uh, India beating China or China beating US or this country beating another country, that's, that has a lot to do with international politics or international conflict. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, from, from the technology advancements, I mean, the, the way, what, what, the, what the level of, of, of Quality level also. I think India is the biggest producer of uh, human resource in IT, mm -hmm. and um, and there is no doubt about that. And uh, no big country, no big economy can survive uh, without the resources from India. Mm -hmm. uh, even if you look at Germany, like every big company has uh, yes. Indian um, yes. developers and like the managers and everywhere. Yes. So like, uh, and same goes like even if you go to like US, uh, even in NASA, like very big names are so it's it's just a reality like yeah. we have to accept that yeah by how this with production in china like every company, exactly Apple yeah does all this Apple. that's right yeah so it, if it's all made in china and exactly so yeah yeah so it is same as you if you say that okay i want to be a big um, yeah. let's say smartphone manufacturer but i won't go to china and i will have it you know, yeah, manufactured yeah. somewhere in Europe, in Germany, or maybe in the U.S., then, you know, it will be, you will be able to do that, but then it will be so expensive that it, you will not be competitive. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Also, like, all this, each time, like, a uh, IT service provider in Germany uh, goes, like, over a certain limit, like, turnover or maybe more than 1,000 employees, you know, they always have to search for near shore or maybe even both offshore like india at least exactly india. and just before this conflict uh, like russia and the ukraine yeah. conflict like i know that there were like a lot of software development that was being done in ukraine right. i'm not sure what is the situation after yes. or during the war um but then i know that there were a lot of companies who were working in ukraine and also in the russia so yeah. they're both like they're very competitive from the cost perspective and their resources were also very intelligent yeah. And yeah, they are good, good software developers. And you know, everything comes from like how good institutes you have. So if you have good universities and uh, they can produce good brains mm -hmm. and something which is like uh, really required in the industry, then you have a good uh, output of human resource. And then the whole chain starts from there. Yeah. So like you can say that the good universities are the first step in this whole supply chain. Yes. yes. Cool. Uh, just one final question. Could you imagine to get maybe some kind of marketing or sales expert who really knows, for example, the German or European market very well, 
kind of partner or like you know to um, learn something from to develop like your um, basically your growth curve of the company you have right now a little bit faster like to get into Germany could you imagine doing something like that? Yeah I have this my friend Thomas Klein who <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm seriously considering working okay. with him on this okay. one okay. yeah okay. and I recommend him and like everybody else too okay. yeah okay. yeah yeah I must, I must like to look on Google. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you. And uh, talk to you soon. Bye. Yes, thanks. thanks. Bye.